ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम वी सी प्रमोद एंड विद मी इज सुभद्रा रामचंद्रन द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी सेज फाइव क्रो हाउस होल्ड प्रोवाइडेड वॉटर कनेक्शन सिंस लॉन्च ऑफ जल जीवन मिशन इन टू थाउजेंड नाइन्टीन पैडी प्रोक्योरमेंट इन हरियाणा एंड पंजाब टू स्टार्ट टूडे लेफ्टिनेंट गवर्नर मनोज सिन्हा लॉन्चेज ट्वेंटी पैडी प्रोक्योरमेंट सेंटर्स इन जम्मू सांबा एंड खटुआ डिस्ट्रिक्ट इंडिया कोविड नाइन्टीन वैक्सीनेशन कवरेज क्रॉसेज द नाइन्टी क्रो मार्क नीति आयोग टू फेलिसिटेट सेवेंटी फाइव वुमेन अचीवर्स एज पार्ट ऑफ आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव सेलिब्रेशन वर्ल्ड लार्जेस्ट खादी ट्राई कलर अनफर्ल्ड एट ले इन लद्दाख ऑन गांधी जयंती नागालैंड टू होस्ट फिफ्टी सिक्स नेशनल क्रॉस कंट्री चैंपियनशिप नेक्स्ट ईयर एंड एन आईपीएल क्रिकेट राजस्थान रॉयल्स बी चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स बाय सेवन विकेट As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is underway, we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and also help others get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain 2 gaz ki doori for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any covid information and guidance contact national helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075 Prime Minister Narendra Modi has described the Jal Jeevan Mission as a movement to empower women in rural India with jan bhagidari and active participation from everyone Mr Modi was interacting with gram panchayats and pani samitis across the country on Jal Jeevan Mission through video conferencing yesterday मुझे खुशी है कि आज के दिन देश भर के लाखों गांवों के लोग ग्राम सभाओं के रूप में जल जीवन संवाद कर रहे हैं ऐसे अभूतपूर्व और राष्ट्रव्यापी मिशन को इसी उत्साह और ऊर्जा से सफल बनाया जा सकता है जल जीवन मिशन का विजन सिर्फ लोगों तक पानी पहुंचाने का ही नहीं है ये विकेंद्रीकरण का भी एक बहुत बड़ा मूवमेंट है ये विलेज ड्रिवन विमेन ड्रिवन मूवमेंट है इसका मुख्य आधार जन आंदोलन और जन भागीदारी है Mr Modi said gram panchayats have been provided over 2 lakh 25000 crore rupees specially for water and cleanliness he said clean water and water scarcity are global issues he urged the people of india to realize the importance of clean water The Prime Minister said five crore households have been connected with water connection since the launch of Jal Jeevan Mission in 2019. On the occasion, the Prime Minister launched the Rashtriya Jal Jeevan Kosh. He also launched the Jal Jeevan Mission mobile application for improving awareness among stakeholders and for greater transparency and accountability of schemes. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated the winners of the Healthgiri Awards 21. In a tweet, Mr Modi lauded the India Today group for their regular practice of honoring grassroots level change makers, be it in cleanliness or now healthcare, on the 2nd of October every year. He said through the COVID-19 global pandemic, extraordinary individuals and organizations rose to the occasion and strengthened the fight against the pandemic. Mr Modi said Health Giri Awards 21 is a commendable effort by India Today to honor such outstanding efforts and highlight their work. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has reiterated that his government is committed to empowering small farmers in every way. He said the center has been saying right from the first day that on whichever point there is a disagreement on the farm laws it is ready to sit together and discuss those issues. In a wide-ranging interview with an English weekly magazine Mr Modi said many meetings have also been held in this regard but no one has come up so far with a specific point of disagreement that they want to be changed. The Prime Minister question in such a large country as India whether it is possible to make a decision which is acceptable to 100% people. He said although if a decision is not acceptable to even a small number of people they are not wrong. They may have their own genuine concerns 
concerned, but if the decision is in larger interest, then it is the responsibility of the government to implement such a decision. The procurement of paddy in Haryana and Punjab will start today. Union Ministry of Food and Public Distribution has written a letter to Punjab and Haryana governments in this regard. The letter said, paddy should be procured as per the fair average quality FAQ norms prescribed for Harif marketing season 2021-2022. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha has launched 20 paddy procurement centres, Mandis, in Jammu, Samba and Katua districts of the Union Territory. The move is aimed at ensuring the remunerative prices to the farmers and timely sale of paddy. Speaking on the occasion, Mr. Sinha said that the money will be directly credited into the accounts of the farmers. The LG said the use of technology has enabled all these mandis to get linked digitally with the procurement portal so that the FCI can register the farmers on the portal and transfer money to their accounts through DBT within 72 hours. He assured the farmers that the number of e-mandis will be increased further in future. The LG said the initiative would eliminate middlemen and end distress sales. Union Minister of State for Railways and Textiles, Darshana Jardosh, has said that the railway network, once completed, will be a game-changer for the Kashmir Valley. The minister is on a visit to Kashmir as part of the Union Government's public outreach program. Addressing media persons at Srinagar Railway Station yesterday, Mrs. Jardosh said that udhampur srinagar Baramula rail link project is the most ambitious railway project in India post-independence and the railways is working at full capacity to meet all deadlines. The minister said that the railways is committed to take developments to every corner of the country and Kashmir ranks high on the agenda of the central government. She said that besides providing relief to the general population, the railways network is also of strategic importance from the security point of view, especially in a place like Kashmir. Earlier in the day, the minister visited Banihal railway station by rail and took stock of operations there. She inspected Tunnel T80 control room and also Tunnel 144 during her visit. India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage has crossed the 90 crore mark. Till now, more than 90 crore 42 lakh vaccine doses have been administered. More than 65 lakh 27,000 vaccine doses were administered yesterday. In West Bengal, counting of votes is begun for bypolls to Bhavanipur Assembly seat and polls to Shamshir Ganj and Jangipur Assembly constituencies. Elaborate security arrangements have been made to avert any untoward incident during the counting. More than five people are not allowed to gather within 100 meters of the counting centers till the counting is over. Counting is also underway for bypolls to Pipli Assembly constituency in Odisha's Puri district. An inter-ministerial subgroup led by Ministry of Coal has been monitoring the coal stock situation in the country twice a week. Coal Ministry sources said in order to manage the coal stock and ensure equitable distribution of coal, Ministry of Power constituted a co-management team in August this year, comprising of representatives from Power Ministry, Central Electricity Authority, Power System Operation Corporation Limited, Railways and Coal India Limited to ensure daily monitoring. The unprecedented increase in coal-based power coupled with supply shortage during monsoon and less stock build-up in April to June 2021 has led to the depletion of coal stocks in power plants, which was 13 days as on 1st of August this year and now 4 days as on 1st of October 2021. Out of 135 power plants monitored on daily basis, 72 plants have coal stocks of less than 3 days, 50 plants have stocks from 4 to 10 days and 13 plants have stock of more than 10 days. Union Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has said that education along with vocational training are needed to make India a Vishwa Guru. He was speaking at the dedication ceremony of newly constructed multi-purpose buildings of the Saraswati Shishu Vidya Mandir at 10 places including Angul and Dhenkanal in Odisha. More from Mahabhuvaneshwar correspondent. Remembering Mahatma Gandhi on his birth anniversary yesterday, the Union Education Minister said that the father of the nation had conceptualized Nai Talim to ensure the employability of students to education. He said due trust has been given to vocational education in the new education policy. He said a plan is on the anvil for skilling children and youth in the age group of 15 to 25 years. Girish Chandradar, EIR News, Kovarishwar. 
Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change Bhupender Yadav has assured that India will engage constructively at conference of the parties COP26 and evaluate bridging proposals to conclude the Paris rule book which can be done by delivering on the climate finance promises of the developed countries representing India virtually at the pre-conference of the parties COP26 meeting held in Milan Italy he highlighted that India recognizes the urgency of strong climate action in this decade to ensure that the world is on track to stay within the temperature goal of the Paris agreement as well as adapt to its impacts and minimize loss and damage Mr Yadav said hence the COP26 outcome must emphasize the need to plug the ambition gap by delivering the means of implementation support that will allow developing countries to enhance their climate actions the pre cop 26 meeting was hosted by the government of italy from the 30th of september to the 2nd of october 2021 in milan italy in the run up to the cop 26 next month environment minister bhupendra yadav has launched a web portal indianwetlands.in on the occasion of Gandhi Jayanti and heralding the iconic week of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav of the ministry the portal is a single point access to all information relating to wetlands the portal is a dynamic system for processing information and making it available to the stakeholders in an efficient and accessible manner the portal also hosts capacity building material data repository videos and information for students Importantly a dashboard for each state and UT has been developed to access the portal and populate it with information on wetlands in the administration You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio a reminder of the headlines before we move on Prime Minister Narendra Modi says 5 crore households provided water connection since launch of Jal Jeevan Mission in 2019 Paddy procurement in Haryana and Punjab to start today Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha launches 20 paddy procurement centers in Jammu, Samba and Katua districts. India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage crosses the 90 crore mark. Niti Aayog to felicitate 75 women achievers as part of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav celebrations. World's largest khadi tricolor unfurled at Leh in Ladakh on Gandhi Jayanti. Nagaland to host 56 national cross country championship next year and in IPL cricket Rajasthan Royals beat Chennai Super Kings by 7 wickets. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. आजादी के आंदोलन के खजाने में ऐसे ढेरों शब्द जिन्होंने बदल दिए इतिहास तारीख बदलने वाले लफ्जों पर आकाशवाणी समाचार ला रहा है विशेष कार्यक्रम धरोहर हर सोमवार To celebrate the 75th year of independence, Niti Aayog's flagship initiative, the Women Entrepreneurship Platform (WEP), will felicitate 75 women achievers as part of the Amrit Mahotsav celebration. In its fifth year since inception, Women Transforming India Awards (WTI) 2021 will celebrate the contribution of women entrepreneurs towards. sashakt aur samarth bharat by building self sufficient businesses and overcoming challenges via unique business solutions the wti awards is niti aayog's endeavor to recognize and celebrate stories of exceptional women change makers from across india the application form is available on wep.gov.in and applications will be accepted till 31st december 2021 World's largest khadi national flag was installed at Leh in Ladakh on the occasion of Gandhi Jayanti yesterday. It was inaugurated by Ladakh Lieutenant Governor R K Mathur. More from our Ladakh correspondent. 
Lay based fire and fury corps organized the historic event of unfurling monumental national flag on the occasion of Gandhi Jayanti at Lay Garrison. Chief of Army Staff General M. M. Narwane, Northern Command GOC Lieutenant General Y. K. Joshi, Fire and Fury Corps GOC Lieutenant General P. J. K. Meenan, senior military and civil officials were present on the occasion. The flag measuring 225 by 150 feet and weighing 1000 kilograms is the largest hand woven and hand spun cotton khadi flag ever manufactured in India by the Khadi Village Industries Commission affiliated Mumbai based Khadi dyers and printers. Sura Soy Engineer Regiment was entrusted with the responsibility of installing national flag at the top of high mountains. The ceremony included with a series of events like brass burned by Ladakh Scouts Regiment Center along with cultural programs and national anthem by the students. Ramesh Chandra, All India Radio News, Leh. Defence Minister Radnath Singh has expressed anguish at the tragic death of four Navy personnel who were part of the Indian Navy mountaineering expedition to Mount Trishul. In a tweet, Mr. Singh said, The nation has not only lost precious young lives, but also courageous soldiers in this tragedy. The Defence Minister said his heart goes out to the bereaved families of Lieutenant Commander Rajni Kant Yadav, Lieutenant Commander Yogesh Tiwari, Lieutenant Commander Anand Kukreti and MCPO2 Hari Om. Mr. Singh said his thoughts are with their families in this hour of tragedy. He prayed for early locating of the remaining team members. The 8th edition of India-Sri Lanka Joint Military Exercise Mitra Shakti will be conducted in Sri Lanka from the 4th to 15th of October this year. An all-arms contingent of 120 personnel of the Indian Army will participate in the exercise along with the battalion of Sri Lankan Army. Defence Ministry said the aim of the exercise is to promote close relations between armies of both countries and enhance interoperability and sharing best practices in counter-insurgency and counter-terrorism operations. The exercise will involve tactical level operations at sub-unit level in an international counter-insurgency and counter-terrorism environment and will go a long way in further strengthening the relationship between both the South Asian nations. This will also act as a catalyst in bringing synergy and cooperation at grassroot level between both the armies. As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence, a series of events is being organized by the government as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. India's glorious fight for freedom is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the valiant struggle every day. Today is the death anniversary of Kadambini Ganguly, who, along with Chandramukhi Basu, became the first female graduates in India from Bethany College in Kolkata. Kadambini Bose was born in Bhagalpur, British India, modern-day Bangladesh, on July 18, 1861. She was born during the Bengali Renaissance, which was a period of religious, social and educational advancement in the Bengal region from the 19th century to the early 20th century, Kadambini was directly impacted by this cultural movement as her father was an influential member of the Hindu reformation movement, Brahmo Samaj, as well as co-founder of women's rights organization, Bhagalpur Mahila Samiti. And although this was a time when Indian women had scarce educational opportunities, Kadambini's father understood the importance of education and allowed Kadambini to attend school. After primary school, Kadambini attended India's first college for women, the recently established Banga Mahila Vidyalaya, which later merged with Mithune College. The school adopted the Calcutta University entrance exam and, in 1879, Kadambini became the first woman to pass this rigorous academic test. 
Kadambini Success inspired Bethany College to start their first arts program and open up graduate courses. The first classes consisted of only two students, Kadambini and her peer, Chandramukhi Basu. They completed their studies in 1883, becoming the first women to graduate college in India. After graduating, Kadambini married Dwarkanath Ganguly, her mentor and teacher at Bethany College. Dwarkanath, a passionate leader of India's women's rights movement, encouraged his wife to pursue a medical degree. Calcutta Medical College refused to accept Kadambini, but the couple fought hard and she was eventually admitted as their first female medical student. Despite continued resistance from teachers and staff, Kadambini graduated Calcutta Medical College in 1886. Along with Anandi Joshi, Kadambini Ganguly became the first woman in India to study medicine and earn a degree in 1886, while Anandi Joshi studied at the Women's Medical College of Pennsylvania in the United States. Ganguly pursued Western medicine at Calcutta Medical College, CMC. Criticism from conservatives opposing female liberation could not hold her back and Kadambini chose to pursue the highest possible medical qualification. She travelled to the United Kingdom in 1892 and received three more doctoral certifications. When she returned to India, she worked as a gynaecologist at the Lady Dufferin Hospital and later started her own private practice. Kadambini's busy life as a doctor and mother of eight children did not stop her from playing a role in India's women's rights movement. She was one of the six representatives in the first female delegation of the 1889 Indian National Congress and in 1906 she helped organize the Women's Conference in Calcutta. She was also extremely active in many other movements, like one that fought to improve work conditions for female Eastern Indian coal miners. After her husband's death in 1898, she practiced medicine in Kolkata till her death in 1923. That brings us to the end of this episode of Aazadi Ka Safar, AIR News Ke Sang. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Narcotics Control Bureau's Mumbai unit has carried out a raid on a private cruise in Mumbai and busted a drug party. NCB Zonal Director Samir Vankhane said they are investigating 8 to 10 persons and probe is underway. Drugs are being recovered. It is being said that son of a Bollywood actor is also among them, but the agency has not shared any details. In the program spotlight, we are broadcasting a special series, Seva or Samarpan, B. Sal Sushasan K. Today, the theme is India First Foreign Policy, Vishwa Guru. It showcases Prime Minister Narendra Modi's resolve and dedication to make India a global leader. This special program can be heard tonight on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.15 p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.gov.in and on our YouTube channel News On Air Official. I'm raising awareness about coronavirus in Corona Jagrupta series at 9.30 to 10 p.m. A senior doctor from a renowned hospital will be with us to answer the queries of listeners. So keep listening to All India Radio News for the latest developments. Nagaland will host 56 national cross-country championships next year. Addressing media persons at Kohima, Associate Vice President of Athletics Federation of India, AFI, Abu Mehta said it will be the first ever for the state to host a national athletics event. He said the championship is likely to be held on the 15th of February 2022 in Kohima. Chief Minister Nifi Rio has expressed gratitude to AFI for allotting the 56th National Cross Country Championships 2022 to Nagaland. In IPL cricket, quick fire 50 from Shivam Dubey 64 not out and Yashasvi Jess for 50 guided Rajasthan Royals are out to beat Chennai Super Kings CSK by 7 wickets in Abu Dhabi last night. Chasing the target of 190 runs, Rajasthan Royals scored 190 for 3 in 17.3 overs. Earlier, Rajasthan won the toss and chose to field. 
batting first, Chennai set up the target of 190 runs in front of Rajasthan with the heroics of opener Ruthu Raj Gaikwad 101 not out in 60 balls. The score is made in IPL 100. In another, another match yesterday, Delhi Capitals defeated Mumbai Indians by four wickets at Sharjah. While MI scored 129 runs for the loss of eight wickets in the stipulated 20 overs, Delhi Capitals smashed 132 runs in 19.1 overs for the loss of six wickets. Two matches are scheduled today. Royal Challengers Bangalore will take on Punjab Kings in Sharjah at 3.30 p.m., while Kolkata Knight Riders will clash with Sunrisers Hyderabad in Dubai at 7.30 p.m. Now let's take a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital Delhi is likely to have generally cloudy sky. The temperature will vary between 26 and 35 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. It recorded a minimum temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, while the maximum is expected to be 31 degrees. Chennai is expected to have generally cloudy sky with light rain. The lower limit of temperature was 26 degrees Celsius, while upper limit is expected to be nearly 34 degrees. Kolkata is likely to have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The city noted a minimum temperature of 28 degrees Celsius, while the maximum is expected to be around 35 degrees. Srinagar will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Temperature will hover between 16 and 26 degrees Celsius. Jammu will also have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature was 22 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 32 degrees. Leh will have generally cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm, and the temperature will vary between 7 to 22 degrees Celsius. Gilgit will have generally cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm, with temperature hovering between 15 and 31 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder shower. The minimum temperature was 21 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 31 degrees. Vishakhapatnam will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The city noted a minimum temperature of 27 degrees Celsius, while maximum to be around 34 degrees. In Hyderabad, the temperature will hover between 24 and 33 degrees Celsius with cloudy sky and light rain. Bengaluru will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Temperature will fluctuate between 20 and 29 degrees Celsius. Tiruvananthapuram will have generally cloudy sky with few spells of rain or thunder showers. Minimum temperature was 24, while maximum will be around 30 degrees. In Puducherry, there will be generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. The temperature will vary between 23 and 33 degrees Celsius. And now an overview of today's newspapers. Paddy procurement in Haryana and Punjab from today is a lead story in Hindustan Times. Pioneer report that five crore households provided water connection under Jal Jeevan mission, says Prime Minister. PM slams opposition's political dishonesty on agri-laws, reports Tribune. Government notifies new rules to clear retro tax mess, writes the Hindu. Financial Express reports that employment rises by 8.5 million in September. In another report, paper says, no decision on Air India so far, Goel. World's largest tricolor in Ladakh is on the front page of almost all dailies with the picture of the 1,000 kilogram flag made of khadi at 2,000 feet above ground level. And finally, poha to pasta, this bot does it all. Home style talking of a robot who can make your de delicious and nutritious breakfast in just 10 minutes. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says five crore households provided water connection since the launch of Jal Jeevan Mission in 2019. Paddy procurement in Haryana and Punjab to start today. Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha launches 20 Paddy procurement centers in Jammu, Sambha and Katua districts. India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage crosses the 90 crore mark. Niti Aayog to felicitate 75 women achievers as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav celebrations. World's largest Khadi tricolor unfurled at Leh in Ladakh on Gandhi Jayanti. Nagaland to host 56th National Cross Country Championships next year. And in IPL cricket, Rajasthan Royals beat Chennai Super Kings by 7 wickets. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.com and News on AIR app. 
and with that we end the morning news have a nice day